Hi everybody, this here is the marvelous Sonica Tinker. Uh, my name is Christian Peterson. We are the founders of Loveworks and the Loveworks Solution. And today we're going to be talking about what it might look like if you feel like your husband doesn't value you, if your partner doesn't value you, and what to do. Yeah, and if you have the experience that your husband or partner or boyfriend doesn't value you, it might show up in, in a myriad of different ways. Maybe you have the experience that he doesn't listen to you. That he doesn't tell the truth. Don't prioritize you. Or maybe you get the silent treatment and he withdraws. You just don't get enough connection and communication with him. Yeah, I, re I actually recently talked to a friend. His friend told the story of how she, she had been in a relationship with someone for about a year and a half. Thought it was going pretty good. And then he just dropped out of communication. Like completely out of communication for weeks that would be a good sign that someone might not value you the way you want to be valued. You know, sometimes you might not feel value, valued if they give sexual or romantic attention to other people. Yeah, and maybe not to you. And deliberately hurt your feelings with demeaning comments or put downs. I'll tell you, that's one of the main ways I personally feel disrespected in relationship. If they don't yeah. spend time with you, quality time with you and your family, like they only want to be with you in certain situations at certain times that works for them where they're kind of more focused on themselves. Yeah, only, only on their terms, so to speak. If that person uh, talks poorly, like talks trash about you to other people, maybe when you're in public or to his friends and you hear it from other sources, like spreads bad publicity, so to speak, about you. If they, if they don't ignore, if they ignore your boundaries, if they bully you or abuse you either physically, verbally, emotionally. Yeah. So it could show up in any of those ways and probably many others we didn't uh, say here yet, but you probably know if you have a sense that he doesn't value you. Doesn't value you, doesn't value your concerns, doesn't move to take care of, include you. So we want to give you some ideas of what to do if you have the experience of your partner not valuing you. Yeah. And the very first thing we want to say is that, you know, our tendency when we don't feel valued is to want to get the other person to change their behavior, right? I got to get you to treat me better. And so I want to come in with this list of, of rules for how you should be being if I'm going to be treated properly and, and where, respectfully. Sorry. Where, whereas you might have perfectly valid reasons in that. When we go about it, like what Sonica said, and we say, you know, you need to, it just won't produce the result you're after because your partner always just feels pushed away, criticized, and then he doesn't feel valued just like you right now don't. And it tends to actually reinforce all the behaviors you're really trying to change, right? And you're criticizing, complaining, trying to get him to be different. Yeah, and you can find other videos and podcasts we've made about, you know, where we teach you how do you talk to people, you know, how do you talk not to people, <laughs> to your partner in difficult situations and how do you communicate better. So we actually say in our work, you know, when you're having an experience in a relationship, it's almost always co-created, right? So yes, you have your part in this breakdown, but I have my part in this as well. I have my part in this dynamic. And that is the one place where I do have control. I don't necessarily have control over what you do, but I do have control over what I do. So at the very least, we want to make sure to do our own work so that at least we know that it's not because I'm showing up poorly that we're having this situation. So I want to be able to look at, well, what am I doing that's contributing to this experience? What can I shift over here in me that is going to call you to want to move with me with more respect? That's going to call you to want to value me more. And if you aren't called to go there, then I might choose to exit this relationship and go elsewhere where I am respected and valued. Yeah, so one of the things you can do is kind of, you know, you take a stand for yourself and you don't let yourself be poorly treated. Like you kind of put a, a claim, what do you call it? A stake in the ground that says, hey, I'm a valuable person. I deserve to be treated with respect. And you can say to your partner, I'm available to talk to you about anything. And I'm not available for you call me names, for example, or you to ignore me for 48 hours in a row. That doesn't work for me. 
And I, I remember for me to be able to take that kind of a stand with my partner, I had to change my own mindset from a kind of how, how I always say it is like from a victim mindset to a powerful mindset. Like I had to be able to shift my own sense of self. And really that was kind of the first place for me was, okay, so if I'm going to, you know, be a, a call for or a request for you moving differently with me, how do I have to be here for you to want to move with me that way? So I've got to be able to cultivate in myself this sense of me as a valuable person who is deserving of respect. And when you do that, that is going to call your partner to value and respect you. You know, it's kind of like when, Son when you're in the space, Sonica calls the victim stance. It just calls your partner to keep treating you poorly. So certainly, as Christian was saying, one thing you can do is set clear boundaries. Like, you know, what's okay with you? What's not okay with you? And I remember just how empowering it was the first time I ever hung up on somebody who was mistreating me, you know, just me saying, you know, I will not be spoken to this way. And, you know, hanging up the phone and feeling really good about being the stand for what I was calling in for myself in my interactions and relationship. Yeah. So another thing we want to tell you that really works is, you know, when you have a partner, that, and you have the sensation, the experience that he doesn't value you. It's easy for you to get into the space where all you see is all the ways he doesn't value you, doesn't appreciate you. And it's like it takes up your entire field of vision, all your mental real estate. So it's really important for you to also, as you move forward to try to create change, that you also appreciate where he does show up, where he does value you where he does treat you nicely and tell him how you appreciate that. And as you do that, you know, you're, you know, kind of how we say it is you want to provide what's desired. You know, it's really easy when you don't feel appreciated and valued to not want to appreciate them or value them back. Pretty much, pretty soon, nobody's appreciating nobody. So the more you can model the very behavior you're asking for by respecting them, by appreciating them, by looking for where they are making steps, where they are moving towards you, where they are respecting you and highlighting that. You know, there are kind of two ways to give people feedback about what works for you. One is to criticize them and tell them what they're doing that doesn't work. <laughs> and the other is to highlight what they are doing that works and let them know what it means to you, what it gives you, how much you appreciate it. You know, it's like positive behavioral, you know, modification. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, like, yeah, it's like they want it, do more of what works and what feels good. And unfortunately, the criticizing, nagging, talking about what they're doing that doesn't work generally makes things worse and doesn't necessarily motivate them to want to treat you any better. So the more you can look for those little things they do that really work and appreciate them, you're likely to get more of those. Yeah, and one of the, way, one of the things we often coach men and women in relationship about is how, in, in this case, um, most men, they want to know what works with you. They want to be successful and they want to make you happy. And often, they simply don't have a clue what well, you might think they really should know that by now. And maybe you're right about that, but often they just don't. And if you say it in a good way, they are actually surprisingly open to hearing what they could do that works for you better. So a really great thing to do is assume they want to give to you. They want to treat you better. They want to move with you respectfully and ask for what you want in a very clear, specific way that supports them to want to give it to you. You know, so we always recommend a request that you say, you know, would you be willing to? And then you ask for what you want in this, in a loving, kind way with the expectation that they're going to want to meet you there. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways, you know, we kind of want to as a general rule, want to show up as I would like to be you to show up with me. I remember we once had a participant, a guy actually, in one of our relationship workshops who said, I, I really don't like being criticized. I just, it doesn't do anything good for me. But what I really like is when I get feedback in the form of an appreciation, appreciation sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> this is what he called it. And it basically means there's like a layer of appreciation and then there's the meat in the middle is, you know, the feedback. So, you know, 
I said, maybe you, you can demonstrate an example for that. So you were to tell me something in an appreciation sandwich. You know, I really appreciate how focused you get on taking care of the kids after a meal. And I would really appreciate it, actually, if you'd be willing to help clean up in the kitchen before you go. Would you be willing to do that? Yeah. That would cool. be awesome if we could do that together. Uh, and thanks, then, for, thanks for noticing the kid part. I really try to do that. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, I do appreciate that. And I appreciate how focused you get on that. And I can totally get how it probably doesn't even show up for you that the kitchen is still there. So right. that would be great. All right, cool. And so this is, you know, this is not to stroke the guy's ego. It's for you to get what you want and to have your communication actually come across in a way that inspires and encourages him to give you more of what you want. So another thing that we would recommend if you don't feel valued is we often assume that our partners should know what has us feel good and what doesn't have us feel good. I know. <laughs> and, and, you know, one of the things we've really learned is that, well, one, men and women are different. And two, any two people are different. Yeah, what feels good to me is often what I'll just give to you. But that's not always what makes you feel good. So a really great thing to do when you don't feel valued is to assume your partner doesn't know the impact of his actions on you. And to be able to move with him and coach him in your experience, help him see it from your point of view, and also investigate and get curious about what's behind whatever it is he's doing. What's he experiencing? He might be having some doubts or fears or insecurities that are showing up inside of these actions that you, that you experience as disrespectful. And just taking the time to get more curious about your partner and allowing him to get step inside your world often creates a bridge for real positive change because now you can understand more where each other is coming from. You can take it less personal and you can let you can escalate less into negative fights that reinforce you feeling not important, not valued, not respected. Yeah. So that was a lot. So if I were to summarize that real quick, it would be, you know, when you don't feel valued is for you first to, you take a stand for your own value. I'm a valuable person. I deserve to be treated with respect and I deserve to not be mistreated. You take a stand for yourself and you set some boundaries for what you are available for and what you're not available for. And then make sure you use good communication so, you, so you're like a helping guide as opposed to a nagger. You know, when you end up in nagging, then everything just gets worse. But when you're a helping guide, you might get a lot more of what you want. And most important, we would say, is make sure you move and you see yourself as this valuable being that deserves and absolutely will create this equal, healthy, loving interaction. And from that place, you are more likely to move with your partner in a way that's going to call that out. And if by chance, everything you do doesn't work, get support. You know, there are people like us out there supporting you to create a healthy interaction. You do not have to do this by yourself. Yeah, you can go check out our website. we got lots of resources that are readily available. we got lots of other materials and videos here on our YouTube channel or in podcasts. So there's, there's lots of help to be had and you can always contact us for private support. And be gentle with yourself. You know, it really is steady by, you know, steady Steady, steady wins the race. Yes, you know, like step by step by step. And little steps can make a very big difference. So be gentle and patient with yourself as you create these positive changes here in your relationship. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.